Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Coding Kaiju tutorial. My name is Diego, and today we're going to talk about dictionaries. So dictionaries are sometimes also referred to as hash tables or hash maps. In the modern day, most people, most languages call them dictionaries. So what is a dictionary? A dictionary is a data structure, like an array. But instead of accessing values by their index, you access them by their key. You see, each value in a dictionary has a key associated with it. A key associates to a value. So to instantiate a dictionary, we use this curly bracket notation. And you can think of a dictionary just like an actual dictionary containing words and definitions. So when you think of it like that, the word itself would be the key. And you look up the word, and the value associated to that is the definition. So there's three main points I want, to, I want you to take away from this. The first one is that dictionaries are unordered. To access a value in a dictionary, you use its key. And so the order in which the dictionary exists in the computer's memory doesn't matter. And you shouldn't rely on it. The next thing is that every key is associated to a value, and keys are unique. You cannot have duplicate keys. So let me show you with an example. Let's imagine we are storing a character's dialogue in an RPG, and we want them to have different dialogue responses to different events in the game. So we'll do two simple ones. The greeting, how a character greets someone, and then how they say goodbye or the farewell. So this is the syntax we use to assign a new value to a dictionary. You just write it out as if that key already exists. You access the key and then assign it a value. And so when we print this dictionary out, this is what it looks like. We got the brackets and then we have the keys and their values. So in a dictionary, the keys must be unique and this is easy to demonstrate. If we use the key greeting again and assign it another value, you'll see that when we print it out, it has been overridden. And while keys have to be unique, you can have duplicate values. That's okay. Okay, so now that we've covered the basics of dictionaries, let's go into some more detail. So I'm going to create a new dictionary called copy, and then we're going to assign it the value of dialog. And when we edit the value of the greeting key and dialog and print both dictionaries out, you'll see that both dictionaries have been modified, even though we only modify dialog. And that's because we didn't truly make a copy. Both variables are actually pointing to the same dictionary as it exists in memory. If you truly want to make a copy, you'll want to use this duplicate function. Next, let's talk about how to compare two dictionaries. And we're going to use something called a hash. If you try to compare two dictionaries using just the equals equals operator, it's always going to evaluate to false. You have to hash them first. So what is a hash? Well, in this context, a hash is simply a function that converts a data structure, in our case, a dictionary, into a string or a number. And if the data structures are identical, then the output of the hash function will also be identical. Another common use case for hashes is in passwords. When you type in your password into a piece of software, if it's well written, it will hash your password and store that hash, which is you know simply a number or a string, into the database. It won't be your actual password. To erase an entry in a dictionary, you simply use this erase function with the argument of whichever key you want to erase. And finally, one more useful function for dictionaries. You can check whether or not a dictionary has a key in it by using this has function. That way you don't accidentally try to access uh, an invalid key. 
So as usual, I'm gonna link the official Godot documentation in the description. You can learn a lot more about dictionaries there, what other sorts of helpful functions exist. If you feel like you learned something, why not leave a like, subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.